Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Anu Joshi and I'm a real estate broker based in Toronto serving the GTA. I'm also the founder of Anuvision Group. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about the ban on foreign home buyers. Not everyone knows this yet, but Canada's ban on foreign home buyers is now in effect, barring commercial enterprises and individuals outside of Canada from buying residential properties in the country. The foreign buyer ban, also known formally as the Prohibition on the Purchase of Residential Property by Non-Canadians Act, was passed by the federal government last year. The ban officially began on January 1st, 2023, and will remain in place for two years. That means from Jan 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2024, at least this ban will be in effect. Overall, this came as a result of the crazy skyrocketing prices in Canada. Obviously, it was a variety of factors that caused this, and I do tons of videos to discuss more about that. Um, however, I'm not going to be touching on that in this particular video. So prices went to a crazy peak of about 800000 or so Canada-wide, right? Not just GTA and not just GVA, um, but Canada-wide, the average was a national peak uh, last year, which we hit. So although average home prices in Canada have, have since dropped, housing affordability still remains a concern for most Canadians. Fueling some of this anxiety are interest rates. Currently in the market, we know what's happening with the rising interest rates. Um, and then those that are stuck with variable rate mortgages, stuck, I use that term loosely, um, but that have variable rate mortgages, they're already paying hundreds more per month compared to early last year. Those with fixed mortgages who have yet to renew and are going to be up for renewal in this very, very high interest rate environment are terrified of what's going to happen um, in terms of their monthly payments, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these factors do um, feed into this sort of frenzy that we've had, um, where the prices are, what's going on in the real estate market, et cetera, et cetera. So one small part of this um, is the foreign buyers that are actually buying up properties. Now, I don't have the stats, but um, I heard a few years ago that specifically in the in the Toronto area, so in the greater Toronto area, something like 5% of new buyers only were foreign buyers. So the stat might change, um, and don't quote me on that, but um, that's what it was a couple of years ago. We don't know if it's changed, um, but we do know that it is one piece of this very big housing affordability puzzle that policymakers are trying to solve, right? So when it comes to the actual ban, um, which properties are included in the ban? According to this act, uh, any residential property including detached homes, uh, semi-detached homes, townhouses, residential condos, or, or similar, anything, any property that's occupied for residential purposes is considered part of this ban for uh, foreign home buyers. The reason for the ban to come into effect, according to the CMHC, is that the legislation is aiming to, quote, makes homes more affordable, uh, make homes more affordable, sorry, um, for those living in Canada by cracking down on foreign investment. Again, we don't know the numbers and, and the percentage of foreign investment. Uh, to my knowledge, it's a fairly small piece of the puzzle. Majority of the demand that we have in the GTA specifically, I can speak to, um, majority of that is local demand. So, uh, you know, local speculators, local investors, and local home buyers. Um, that obviously does not get addressed with this foreign buyer ban. But again, this legislation is specifically to address foreign buyers. Um, Housing Minister Ahmed Hussein said in a press release on December 21st of last year, he said that homes should not be commodities, which I find interesting and true. Homes should not be commodities. But given the real estate market in the GTA um, and the GVA, Greater Vancouver area, uh, we are seeing that it has become commoditized over the years. Um, it's become an investment vehicle for many families, many individuals, many companies. Um, Again, going back to my point, you know, some of them might be foreign companies and foreign buyers, but a lot of them are locals, right? It's local people that are buying their second investment property, their third investment property um, that, that are contributing to this sort of speculative behavior. So mm, even though the foreign buyer ban doesn't address any of the local demand, which I reckon is a majority of what is actually influencing the practices that we have here in Toronto, especially, um, you know, it, it just sort of addresses one small piece of the puzzle, but 
alas, that that's what we have. Um, there, there's no way so far that policymakers have come up with to police or, um, you know, sort of punish speculators. They're trying to do that in different ways. Um, and I'll talk about it a little bit more, maybe in another video. Um, don't want to get too carried away here. But this ban specifically is just covering that small portion of buyers that may have been foreign, that at least for the next two years, they're going to take them out of the mix um, so that the competition here is, you know, without those additional um, uh, buyers from foreign. We don't know how many that'll be or or what the impact actually is, but that's what the the ban is trying to address. The foreign buyer ban uh, attempts to decrease competition in the home buying world, which is obviously highly competitive, as everyone knows. Um, add to that the current crazy interest rates and stress tests and how you know buyers have to get approved for mortgages in Canada um, and even more regulation probably coming right around the corner. Um, it makes it harder and harder for, for people to buy homes. So that additional uh, competition from foreign buyers is, is now going to be removed for the next two years. So it would be interesting to find out you know, how much of an impact this really has, um, the, the foreign buyer has ban has on the actual market, specifically in, in greater Toronto area and greater Vancouver area, where we have the highest concentration um, of buyers. We have, you know, the most demand. If we're talking regionally in Canada, um, we have the most probably um, concentration of foreign buyers in, in GTA and GVA as well. Um, so if the most of them are, are in these places, I'd love to know how much it actually is. And at the end of two years, you know, what is the impact? What's the result of the foreign buyer ban? I'd love to know that. Um, uh, the government hasn't published any numbers on how much um, of a help they, they think it's going to be or even how they're going to really quantify it. Um, but we shall see. Uh, once there are updates, I mean, it just came into effect right now in January. Um, so it, it's been just a couple of months. We'll see how it, the rest of 2023 goes and what its impact is. I'm sure that uh, that we'll be able to, you know, hear more about it as as government release, releases some data, hopefully, um, to monitor how this policy is working and if it's working and if it's actually helping the problems that we have. As I mentioned, I'm going to say it one last time, um, a lot of the problems that we have in terms of housing affordability um, and how the housing market is going, a lot of that is because of uh, internal demand. By internal, I mean local people that are here buying investment properties, uh, doing you know business, um, getting into speculative ventures and stuff like that. So that's a big chunk. Um, I don't think foreign buyers is a huge, huge chunk of it. I don't think that this foreign buyers ban is going to make a big difference if it does. And if it achieves the goal that it's trying to achieve, which is making it easier and less competitive for local buyers and first time buyers to do it. If it achieves that, fantastic. I'm all for it. But realistically speaking, I don't think that it's going to it's it's a very small drop in a giant ocean of the problems that we have surrounding housing affordability uh, in Toronto, in the GTA and, and in Canada as a whole. So um, when I do have any updates, I'll be more than happy to share them with you. In the meantime, if you have questions about investment properties or properties in general in the greater Toronto area, I would be more than happy to help you out. Um, all of my contact information is in the description box below, and I'll share some additional resources about uh, the topic of this video as well. And if you thought this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel because I do post brand new videos, um, informative real estate videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.